Welcome back to Studio D. <laughs> well, the most anticipated, anticipated movie of the summer is finally out, and it's of course Captain America Civil War. They're coming for you. I'm not the one that needs to watch their back. This doesn't have to end in a fight, Tony. You just started a war. Stay down. Final warning. I could do this all day. Political pressure mounts to install a system of accountability when the actions of the Avengers lead to collateral damage. Captain America believes superheroes should remain free, while Iron Man sharply disagrees. And it's on! <laughs> so you might be able to tell I'm a bit stoked for this film. It's already made nearly $250 million worldwide before it even opens here in America. But how did the Civil War actually start? Well, we found a clip that might explain it. Morning. Evans? Downey, is that the last donut with red, white, and blue sprinkles? What did I tell you would happen if you ate the last donut with red, white, and blue sprinkles? A little foggy on it, but I think it was something like raining down hellfire. That's right. And here I am without an umbrella. I feel a storm brewing. It's always about food, but we must not forget the tech in the film, and one of the most iconic items is Captain America's shield. But could that shield actually work? We've got our 45, and uh, let's go ahead and give it eight rounds as fast as we can. What do you think? Yeah, get some. Here we go. Here we go. So let's take a look at the shield itself. Take a look on the backside, and you can see that old Captain America there would be proud of his, uh, of his shield there. So it's all made to spec, to size, to weight, and it survived eight rounds of 45. So get some. That's who I want testing all that tech, a wily old man in the middle of nowhere. Get some. But what about Iron Man's <laughs> suit? How does it actually work? For that, we go to the nerds. So what could really be going on with the Iron Man suit? Well, maybe it's some revolutionary incompressible fluid that lines the interior of his suit, kind of like the cerebral spinal fluid lines the interior of your skull. Or maybe it's something a little bit more space age that provides some gravitational assistance like the inertial dampers do in Star Trek. Well, either way, let Iron Man get into your car and he would never need to wear a seatbelt. Why? Because science! <laughs> so now that both sides have been explained, which side are you taking? I think you can clearly tell which one I'm going with. I mean, <laughs> which one I'm going with? I got socks to go with it. I'm what do you think? Iron Man. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh look at his socks. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man nerd. socks. Thank Rock'em Apparel. Yeah, I got, so I got socks. I got the whole outfit. This is how I'm going to the movie tonight. I yeah, can't. I love how you pitched it to the nerd, but I think we might be talking to the one. <laughs> <laughs> I've been with him all day. I might have a six foot Iron Man fat head in my apartment, just saying. Oh my do gosh. Do you really? I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> I, I do. Do you yeah. see what he's wearing I right know. now? Wait, totally Natalie's like, yes, it's true. It's a real thing. 